Today, we're going to talk to some backdoored sports cards. Now, this is not in relation to over 18 related content. It is in relation to Tops 2023, Chrome, Baseball, and some cards that look like they were stolen prior to the release of the product. Now, this is going to be an interesting one because we're going to talk through, you know, the facts in detail, take you through what, what my thought process is. But also, I want to highlight how, you know, a lot of the rhetoric in recent months has been on some of these manufacturers making mistakes and on also some of these graders and how, you know, when this sort of stuff happens, these businesses are run too well to allow cards to be stolen, right? Cards can't be backdoored out. This kind of thing can't happen. Well, not only have we seen it numerous times, I think this example, if you're somebody that thinks like that, might sit back and say, okay, well, you've just, you know, proved me wrong, or not, maybe not proved me wrong, but you've maybe uplifted my knowledge a little bit. Now, like I said, this is in relation to some baseball cards from Tops 23 Chrome. This popped off on Reddit um, a few months ago. Somebody made, you know, this post and basically said, got friended these, no, you know, no clue what they are worth, which should raise alarm bells and red flags immediately because these cards showed up, I think it was even before we knew what the checklist was for 2023 Chrome. The product hadn't been released yet. So when you're seeing somebody talk about having dozens and dozens of copies of these kinds of parallels, they are numbered cards. You've got Colin Pelusi there. I think it's how you pronounce his surname, Caleb Killian, Spencer Steer, a few others that it's a bit hard to read in the post. But you're talking about, you know, serial numbered cards and some that are signed, some that are unsigned. And that is pretty concerning. Now, this post was deleted in record time. And most of you guys probably would have seen this at some point because it was also discussed on blowout forums. But the thing I want to flag today is also pretty interesting. And this is um, a post from a few weeks ago that was shared with me. And I'm, I'm just getting around to it now. But essentially, um, this person has noticed a few interesting things. They noticed that some of these cards actually started to pop up you know, on social media and on auction sites for sale. Now, to make this interesting, because like I just touched on, this sort of happened before you know, the product was released. This person sort of noticed that, you know, they hadn't seen any of these parallels be sold or hit in box breaks for a considerable period of time. And it wasn't until 19 days ago when they made this post, they said, well, I've continued to not see anything, but now all of a sudden, one person seems to be listing these kinds of cards. And what they found also interesting was that the seller was located in Arizona. Spring training was in Arizona and a number of the pictured players went to spring training and were there. So if you're somebody that sort of had an opportunity to steal these kinds of cards or get somebody to steal them and then you buy them off them in some kind of, you know, black market deal, whatever you want to call it. And then you go to spring training, you get them signed, you can pass these off and try and rip off individuals. Now, some of you might say, well, what's the big deal that the card should have been signed by Tops? Well, it's a big deal because if these, in fact, were stolen or were backdoored, Tops have a pretty big problem on their hand not being able to notice this. Um, is the checklist affected? Did they replace these plays? Did they notice these things were missing? If they didn't, does that mean some packs are out there that are severely under underpacked, if that's, if that's the word I'm looking for? Or did they know about it and replace them with something else? The checklist still has them listed on there. And like these individuals said, they've not seen these shop from, for sale from anyone. And... A few other people sort of do a bit of a deep dive on this as well. They talk to a few examples. A few people, you know, in this thread talk to the fact that um, how could something like this get backed or we don't see it too often. We see it a lot, right? We saw it recently with the whole Pokemon situation as well when it came to the Sword and Shield set where this person very clearly stole all the trainer cards or, or got some of these big high-end cards out of the recent release and then was selling them at a show, not realizing, realizing they'd get caught, right? And this was a pretty big one because you can see the photos there. There's a number of cards that were stolen from the manufacturer. And Rattle Pokemon did a really cool video on this. But again, it's just it's just an interesting one. So I'll put the link to the Reddit thread down below for you to sort of read. A few other people have basically said they've gone through and checked, you know, some of the hits for different players in those pictured and they've not seen them show up. They think there might also be more players than what's pictured also have missing autos and parallels because those things aren't pictured. It's just a, a pretty concerning thing, but not overly surprising with regards to the things we've seen in this industry before, right? Again, some of you might say, well, what's the big deal if they get them signed and then sell them? Well, how do you know they're actually getting them signed by the player, right? There's an authentication guarantee on the back of this that says Tops guarantees the auto. You know, this is a pretty big problem for Tops, how something like this could sort of slip through the cracks. You've got somebody here doing some hanky-panky. So the message with this is, you know, if you're seeing any of these cards be sold, you know, you should start asking some questions of that sell. Or if you've bought some of these, um, I'd be doing your best to try and get in contact with Tops and Fanatics to understand if you're exposed in some capacity because um, this is pretty alarming. You're not just talking to 
a small number of cards here, talking to potentially every single card for each of these parallels for every single one of these players. That is, um, you know, pretty concerning. I'll also put a thread or the post down to the two blowout threads that cover this topic as well, because once again, you're talking about um, the information here and it sort of goes into the same sort of um, story. You're seeing like plenty of these cards basically go to get sided and then they disappear. So um, this is one of the players that's also listed there, if I remember correctly. Um, maybe it's not in this picture, but it's just a bit concerning to see that parallels basically end up, end up backdoored. And it's not, you know, overly surprising for me in the grand scheme of things when we talk to how these businesses are, po are poorly run. Some of you, again, might say, well, how does this happen, right? Tops is a highly credible company and all this kind of thing. Panini is a highly credible company. How could backdooring happen? How could loaded boxes happen? You guys need to understand that the people that are working in the manufacturing facility, like, you know, Tops and Fanatics don't own those. Panini doesn't own those. They sort of rent them out, right? It's one manufacturer that essentially prepares the cards for everyone. So... You know, they're typically worked at by entry-level employees, people that are paid hourly wages that maybe don't care about cards or are working a very mundane manual job that they just don't care about QC. So they see an opportunity to steal something and they steal it. And given that we've not really heard anything from tops on this one, at least from what I've, you know, gathered in, in the little research that I've done, um, that's that's pretty concerning. Because like I said, if that is the case, those pack numbers, those odds numbers, those pull rates are severely impacted for those players. And I'm shocked that they didn't come out and do anything. Now, could these be duplicates? Could these be um, QC error-related cards? Could they be any of those kinds of things? Sure. But like I said towards the start of the video, you know, you've had people sort of sit back and do research and say, well, I've not seen any of these players for these parallels sold on eBay, Comp C, anywhere. I've not seen them hidden breaks. I've not seen it basically anywhere, including social media. Now, that's not the be or end or that's not the answer. That's not the smoking gun. But it helps support the narrative that these cards were meant to be in those packs and they were, in fact, stolen. So I hope to get your thoughts on this one. I know the video or the information is a bit old. The first broke back in April. I had somebody share this with me in, you know, when that first post was made on, on Reddit 19 days ago, or the second post, I should say. Um, I was trying to do a bit more research to, to gather it all before I talked to you. I've been unable to corroborate some of these cards actually, in fact, being missing. I've not been able to see any of these cards being hit myself or see them for sale anywhere. Um, so it looks like it's on the money that these were backdoored. Um, I'm really keen to get some support from each of you, right? If you're into baseball and you're across it pretty hard um, and you've seen some of these cards, please let me know. Or if you're in fact not seen them and you've been monitoring this situation, again, please let me know either via my email down below or on Instagram because this is something that... Um, should raise a lot more eyebrows than what we're seeing, right? It goes to what we talked about for that Lamar Jackson, you know, duplicate one of one. You know, these kinds of mistakes by these manufacturers, they need to be transparent. They need to be open and honest about everything. If they are in fact mistakes, they need to own them and say, okay, guys, we stuffed up. This is what we did wrong. This is what we're going to try and do better in the future. Not just ignore it completely and still sell a product with people expecting to hit certain cards from a checklist and then those cards not in fact being in that checklist. That's, you know, incredibly poor form. And if this is you know, the sign of things to come from fanatics and how they want to go about communicating things, you know, as the leader within the hobby, this is not a good start in my opinion. So as always, please share your thoughts down in the comments below and um, I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.